What's going on guys? Today we're going to test the soil with the Environmental Concepts Soil Test Kit from Menards. In the soil test kit we've got some filtered disc, a couple of o-rings in case the o-ring goes bad on the tubes, soil test kit, instructions, and of course all the gear. Got to head over to the garden and collect some soil. This dirt clump right here ought to do it. Come here, you. All right. All right, I put some rubber gloves on and my fingers are kind of dirty because I've just been squishing this and crumbling this dirt up trying to make it fine. Make it nice and fine, no clumps in there. Maybe I'll put it through some kind of a strainer. Hello, Moto. All right, I'm just gonna pour the dirt into here. Try to make it nice and fine. I just think this will give me a better mixture to some of this organic matter, like grass and, and tiny rocks and stuff. That's not really soil, so I don't really care so much about the pH of that. Okay, look at that. That's pretty fine stuff. Okay, I'm going to pour it back into here. All right, let's read some directions from the soil test kit. Um, all right, right here, pH test. Step one, put the dry crumbled soil into a test tube up to the one milliliter mark. Add one spoon of the barium sulfate. Okay. This test tube right here is not label. So uh, it does say milliliters and then one, two, three, four, five. And let's just double check those directions again. What did that say? Put the dry crumbled, crumbled soil into a test tube up to the one milliliter mark and add one spoon of the barium sulfate. So check out this spoon very tiny spoon you can see it compared to my finger it's not a very big spoon but we'll put that there um let's use the spoon to help us load our test tube here that'll go up to the one milliliter mark Forgive me if this giant spoon is not filling the test tube fast enough for your viewing pleasure. I apologize. Okay. We are at the one millimeter mark. So we have one millimeter of soil. Now we need one spoon of the barium sulfate. So that's right here. I'll wipe that spoon off. Okay, it's pretty clean. We have barium sulfate powder. Soil testing reagent. All right, one spoon. So I don't know what's supposed to go over. It's supposed to be even at the top of the spoon. We're just going to go with this much, about yay. Okay. All right, so now the barium sulfate's just sitting on top of the soil. Put the lid back on here. Okay, next. Add the pH test solution to 2.5, to the 2.5 milliliter mark cap the tube so we need ph test solution there's several things in here there's nitrogen extract um phosphorus extract potassium extract potassium reactant solution and right here this darker colored stuff is the ph test solution so we need to add that 
until uh, we're up to the 2.5 milliliter mark. All right, our tube 2.5 would be right there between the two and the three. So I can already see that in the future, using this much of the pH test solution is going to be what runs out first. Do one more drop. One more. Okay. All right. So we got that. We need to cap the tube. Now, shake tube thoroughly. All right. It doesn't say for how long or what thoroughly means, but after you shake it thoroughly, it says to set the tube down and leave it to settle for about five minutes. If the solution is taking too long to settle, add another scoop of barium sulfate and reshake. Compare the color against the pH reading chart. And this is the reading chart. Dark green is alkaline. Red is very acidic. So uh, we want to be somewhere in between the acid, the slight acid range. Preferably, I want to be around 6.2. Um, but somewhere in here. So one last shake for freedom. And I'm just going to sit this over here and let that settle. And we'll come back in five minutes to see what color it is. Okay, so that is five minutes. Actually gave it closer to 10 minutes. It looks like it's got a little bit of color there, but mainly just looks a little cloudy. So with it being that cloudy, the directions say, oh, I thought that spoonful was a little light. The directions say, if it's taking too long to settle, add another scoop of barium sulfate and reshake. All right, so let's add another scoop of barium sulfate. Okay, that was another five minutes with the extra spoon of barium sulfate. Oh, that's not gonna help us. It does say to try to look at it through some light to see what color the light gives you. These little flashlights are great. One dollar off of wish.com and you could have you one of these. So it looks mostly yellow. Mostly like a yellow kind of color. Maybe yellowish green. So... Uh, All right, based on the chart, I would say we're somewhere between a 6.5. Let's get that color on there again. What do you guys think? Maybe I'm even more neutral but I knew my soil was alkaline. I have a digital tester that says that I'm around a seven. I didn't want to believe that that's true, but based on that and based on this, I definitely have to go with, I'm gonna say it's a 6.8 or 6.9. Maybe even 
a seven. All right, so there's some other things you can do with this kit, like test doo -doo -doo -doo, nitrogen, phosphate, and potassium. We've got a nitrogen, phosphate, and potassium extractant solution. And then we have a liquid reactant for the potassium, a powdery reactant for the nitrogen and the phosphate. Let's get started. And, uh, step one, unscrew the green cap on the device and remove the plunger. So that would be this device here. So I'm gonna hang the phone up on something that can hold the camera so you can see me do this with two hands. We're going to remove the cap here. All right, done. Step two. Oh, let's see if there's anything else. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Remove the cap, place one of the filter papers. Up to the bottom of one of your Okay, so filter paper. Filter paper's right here. We need to remove one of the filter papers. Just one here. One of the filter papers and place it on the bottom of the plunger, ensuring a neat fit by using the end of the spoon. So, it shows a little picture of it going in the bottom, which would be upside down this way. Uh, so the filter paper would need to go in here. Just gonna drop it in there. And use our spoon to assist it along so that it sits flat on the So I've got this nail that's got a little bit of a point to it. So I'm gonna to try to push down on it without ripping the paper. And then it's got kind of a flat edge on the bottom. I'm gonna use that to push it down. This is, this looks like we're getting somewhere. Oh wait, this can come up out of here to give me a better view. Look at that. Okay, good to know. Yeah. So this nail is, that's got that filter settled pretty good down on there. Almost perfect. So trusty nail. Hopefully that doesn't throw off my readings, but I think we'll be okay. All right, so that's done. Got our soil. And looks like the soil goes in. It doesn't show a picture, but my guess is because the droplets right here are going into this apparatus, that the soil would go in here and then the filter would come up through those little holes in the bottom. So, all right, let's just hope that this is right. Do the... Uh, Soil to the one milliliter mark, um, and this one doesn't have measuring lines on it, so it's got to be it's got to be this one. Long way to go, mochacho. Oh, we stunned it a little bit more. Okay, that puts us right at the one milliliter line. All right, now what? Uh, for nitrogen, one milliliter, all right, add the appropriate test solution. So nitrogen, add N1 solution to the 2.5 mark. So we need the N1 solution, which is right here. And 
one solution to the 2.5 mark. All right. Right there. Okay. 2.5 mark. Insert the plunger inside of the barrel. I'm going to push it down until it just touches the soil. So about there. Okay, until it just touches the soil solution in the barrel. Oh, soil solution. All right, now place the cap on the filtering device and screw it down slowly until you see the solution filter from the barrel into the plunger. Okay. So there's our filter right there, that black line. And we need to do this. Screw it down slowly until you see the solution filter from the barrel into the plunger inside. You may feel strong resistance while filtering. Hold the filtering device at a 45 degree angle rather than straight up and down should help relieve the resistance. Okay. So we're gonna do this. When adequate solution, right now I'm not seeing any solution come in through there, none. I feel like I should by now. Oh, there it comes. Just a little bit. When adequate solution in the plunger, unscrew the cap and remove the filtering device. So I'm not sure how much is adequate. Unscrew the cap, pour the solution from the plunger into the test tube to the one milliliter. So we need one milliliters worth of solution. And right now, I don't think we're close to that. Oh yeah, we're probably close. I see what's going on now. See it coming up through that center. Maybe just a little bit more. Just a little bit. Our filter's still looking really good and white down in there. Okay. I think that's probably enough solution. Unscrew the cap and remove it from the filtering device and pour the solution into a test tube. So we got another test tube here. All right, we need to go to the one milliliter line. Let's see, I need to take this off. And pour, nope, straight like this. Oh, we didn't quite have enough. That's not quite one milliliter. No worries, we can put this back on. 45 degree angle. And get some more out of it. I think that's good. We will soon find out. All right, that got us just to exactly one milliliter. So 
We'll just set this aside for now. All right, one milliliter. Into the then complete the test with the nutri nutrient specific instructions. So nitrogen says add one level spoon of the N2 powder. Cap the test tube and gently shake for 10 seconds. So we need the N2 powder, which is right here. We need our handy dandy spoon, which is in the dirt. So we'll just wipe that off real quick with a clean paper towel. And now one level spoon. This one does say level spoon, unlike the beginning directions. All right, one level spoon. So I'm gonna drag it along level. As I take it, I don't know if you guys saw that, but I grabbed it. And just kind of slid it along the top there to make the spoon level. And put that in our solution here. Recap the N2 reactant. Now, uh, cap and shake for 10 seconds. All right. We go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. Now it says take your reading. Oh, let the tube stand untouched for five minutes. Take your reading by holding the test up to the nitrogen reading chart. So we're going to see where we're at somewhere between here and here but until then we need to wait five minutes while this test tube right here waits i'm going to take some of this miracle grow plant food and i'm going to take this much soil and i'm going to put just the slightest And I mean the slightest sprinkle in here. Let's just see. Okay. One spoonful of this, because this is a concentrate, and I'm just going to mix it around in here. And shake it all about. I'm going to do another one, another test tube using this soil uh, the exact same way. Uh, just to compare what my soil would look like had I just got done fertilizing it. So we'll see how that turns out. Okay, so, wow, there's a little bit of a difference here. Um, this is my soil. It's like perfectly clear. This is the soil mixed with the miracle Grow. And if you look on the chart, you know, depleted, deficient, adequate, like that is like somewhere between deficient and adequate. If we put the light to it, yeah, somewhere between deficient and adequate, probably right where you want to be. Uh, pretty crazy. So. I guess miracle Grow knows what they're doing and there's there's some nitrogen in there and it's important to fertilize your soil. We tilled and kept it tilled so no organic matter could grow. And because we kept it tilled, look at how much nitrogen's in my soil right now. I need organic matter and I need nitrogen bad. Okay, so pretty much the same steps for the phosphorus and the potassium. So I'm not gonna walk you through all the steps again. Uh, the only difference is whenever we do the potassium, it's a liquid reactant instead of a powder reactant like the phosphorus and the nitrogen. So I'm just gonna show you the results of these. Let's look at phosphorus. Okay, so with the nitrogen, I was pretty much crystal clear, but you can see with the phosphorus, I am yeah, let's see. Let's just bring it up here. I'm somewhere between deficient and adequate. So phosphorus, I'm not doing too bad. 
Okay, so the potassium is still going, but one keynote, uh, whenever you do the phosphorus that I didn't do, you're supposed to look down through the tube. I already cleaned the tube out, so uh, given that, if I'm supposed to look through the tube, um, I, I can only imagine that's going to make it look darker. So we did see that it was a clear green tint, so I'm guessing that was probably closer to adequate with the phosphorus. Potassium's been going for at least five minutes now. Um, and this is the potassium chart, and you're looking for it to be, you know, clear with slightly any cloudiness. This is pretty cloudy with some particulates in it. I'm going to guess that I'm somewhere between adequate, I think I'm just adequate. So we'll say adequate with potassium. Okay, so that's going to be pretty much it for today. Again, this kit and... The whole kit and caboodle is called Environmental Concepts from Menards. This kit's going to set you back $13.99. At least that's what it was right here in Central Missouri. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.